What's up, this is Marcus Miller. I love J. Ross TV. What's up, y'all? This your boy J. Ross, 10 million strong, y'all, in St. Louis with the man himself, <laughs> base man extraordinaire, Mr. Marcus Miller, y'all. First of all, I got to thank my cat, Louis Cato, for hooking this up, y'all. Louis Cato's right here, man. Right here eating pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> He's eating up all the food in the dressing room. <laughs> yeah. hey, well, first thing, Marcus, like all the cats ask me, what pickups you use in your base? Uh, the, the ones that came with it. Fender, for, Fender. for real? Yeah. He, he acting like I'm, he got secrets. <laughs> no, because everybody said, man, he got Sadowski, man. He he switched over to Aguilar. Fender. For real? All right, Jeff. My base is 1977, and the pickups are the ones that were in there. Oh yeah, that's okay. Well, y'all, hey, y'all, we just got that answer, then. What about your base well, rig? I can sell you some other ones if you need a different answer. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Speaking of Marcus Miller bases, how do you feel about your signature series base that Fender sells? Oh, I like it, man. You know, what about it? I can pick up any one of them. Like a, a couple of times, I uh, forgot to put my base. In the car on the way to the gate, <laughs> I stopped right by Guitar Center and said, "Listen, I borrowed that one right there, and I just got to set up the action a little different. Uh -huh. But I can do a gig. I can play because it feels exactly the same. I, I gave my original bass to the Fender Japan, and the Japanese guys put lasers on it, and they got the, you know, all the, the dimensions, all the measurements perfect. So it feels exactly the same. Uh, the only difference you're going to have is from bass to bass, even like in the old days." All the bases from 1977, they don't all sound the same because you get variations in the wood, you get variations in everything. So uh, each base you got to check out and make sure it sounds the way you want it. Uh, the preamp on my uh, Marcus Miller model was designed by uh, Fender, uh, but there's a guy named, uh, I think his name is John Sir, who used to work on the Pensa Sir bases, and he designed the actual preamp that's in the Marcus Miller base. But it sounds really good. I'm really happy with it. We were only supposed to do the MM model for one year. It was just supposed to be like something to try out. And it's like 11, 12 years now. Because it was like, it's such a popular thing, man. So I'm really proud of it. Let me ask you this, Mark. It's like, now you've been, you've been in the game a long time. Do you still feel the same enthusiasm and excitement, you know, when you walk out on stage now, as you did when you were a kid? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, that's the thing about music, man. It doesn't get old. You know, I mean, you can... You can get bored if you don't keep yourself like inspired. But uh, what I try to do is find different things to concentrate in my music. Sometimes I'm focusing on phrasing. Sometimes I'm focusing on articulation. Sometimes I'm focusing on tone. You know. Sometimes I'm trying to find a way to enhance my tone because everybody kind of knows the sound. You know, the, the sound that I have. But I'm trying to figure out a way to advance it, a way to to update it without losing who I am. So all of that challenge, you know, really uh, inspires me. Yeah, now your thumb has been equated by a lot of cats that you don't know in the hood as, as the sewing machine. Okay. You know, they say Marcus Thumb roll like a sewing machine. Yeah, now, that's a new one. Yeah. Yeah, I, one. <laughs> I mean, just up and down. Oh, yeah. So now, how did you develop that? Was it something you came up with or was it something you just fell into? Uh, I started playing like Larry Graham. You know, I, I was coming up in the 70s and he was, you know, and still is, and he was a man. So I was just kind of learning that technique, but then I started finding myself in other situations besides the straight, straight funk, straight R&B. And I was like, I was in, for instance, I was in Lenny White's band, we were playing Fusion. And I was really, uh, really interested and intrigued by what he was playing on the drums, particularly on the snare drum. So I started trying to create some of those rhythms that Lenny played yes. on the snare drum, on the bass. He used to do the speed one. Do, 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 do. So anyway. Getting back to hey Marcus, what what is some like some of the important things you can tell like the guys coming up now? The 16, 17, they see you guys on stage and they want to be where you are. But is it some kind of time or what kind of attitude or mindset do what you have to have in order to get from the church, for lack of a better phrase, right. to the main stage? Uh there's a lot of things that go into it. Uh first thing you gotta do is you gotta have some talent. Right? You gotta have you gotta have some talent before anything. Uh, the second thing is you gotta love it so much that you, you don't mind working hard. Yeah. There are a lot of people who are talented but they're lazy and they get by on their talent because they can impress people, you know, or in their neighborhood or right. in the church or in the school, they 
and they just enjoy impressing people. But it's the same thing like if you can dribble real good, you can impress everybody around the way, but then you get to the NCAA, everybody can dribble. You know? <laughs> get to the pros, don't nobody care, you know what I mean, because that's just the base level, just having talent is just the base level, then you got to be able to work really hard and always try to grow, always try to, you know, all you church cats, stop complaining about not being able to read music and take out three months out of your life at 16 years old to learn how to read music and stop wasting time, man, God's coming to me, hey man, it's okay if I don't read? I said, didn't you ask me that last year? <laughs> I said, in the one year, man, you could have had that behind you. You know, uh, reading isn't the, isn't the key to anything, but it just makes it easier for you. Right. You get to a rehearsal, and somebody goes, this is what we're playing, and you up there, hey, can you play for me three times? You know, I can hear anything. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, with me, I'm gone. I done recorded it, and I'm gone. I'm down the street to the next session. Man. You know? So, I mean, it won't stop you if you're really talented, but reading just makes, you, makes things easier. You know? So, the other thing is, a lot of guys don't see opportunity when it's there. They don't recognize it. And what I mean by that is um, I know guys who just started playing like two years and they're like, I'm not taking that game, man. It don't pay enough. You know how many gigs I did that didn't pay nothing, man? All of a sudden somebody's in the, in, in the audience go, hey, man, I get your number because I'm getting ready to do this and that. You know, next thing you know, your world is growing, your opportunities are expanding, and next thing you know, you're somewhere. But if you start trying to be Mr. Mr. Businessman at the beginning, you might miss a lot of opportunities. Man, well, last question, Marcus. What about uh, finances? Uh, any advice for how guys can handle their finances in a better way so at the end of their career or life they can have something? Uh, the one thing you got to realize is if you're fortunate enough to start making a lot of money as a musician, understand that your window of making money as a musician is probably about that wide, right? As opposed to a businessman who's not making that much when he's 20, but by the time he's 60, he's making a lot of money. That's a lifelong earning, mm -hmm. you know, no, period, you know? So what I'm saying is a musician, just because you're making X amount of money this year, you know, 2011, you can't count on that. So what you got to do is you got to assume that you're not making what you're making right now. You got to live your life on a much lower level. If you're blessed enough to make money, put it away. Okay? Put it away. Don't buy a house that you that you have to make the same amount of money you're making in your good year to just keep the house. You know? Live below your means. That's what they call it. All right? One day you're blessed enough to look back and you see 15, 20, 30 years behind you, then maybe you can start expanding your lifestyle. But be very careful because a musician's life is not guaranteed. So you got to be really smart. Oh, yeah. That's knowledge, y'all, from the man himself, Mr. Marcus Miller, y'all, in St. Louis for the, uh, what is that? DMS. DMS? I know. Federico? Yeah. <laughs> what, a D, what a DMS tour, y'all. I want to thank him for showing a little love to J. Ross TV, 10 million strong, y'all. We're going to bounce. And I want to send a shout out to BB. I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.